feature in progress without exposing it to everyone who uses your product. Um, and so it's great to be able to work on a feature over a period of weeks and not have to worry that users will find it, hit it, and what is this? Well, it's not done yet. Don't worry about that yet. Like, I don't know. And then we can, we can have QA and design look at the feature in progress. We give them a URL with the mangled flag bit in it and say, go here, go to this URL, and you can see what, we're, what we've implemented, and they can give us feedback throughout the development process. Beautiful thing. Um, you can see that there are no cards in the ready to code here. And that's because they've all been moved off and done. So what this means is that this last, so we have, um, let's see what we got. Ready to code, needs a specification is, um, we have a car we want to get done, but we don't have enough information to do it. So this is, uh, if it's in here, it's a cue to me, like I need to go bug somebody, make a phone call, or send an email. Tracking is, we're not doing it, but we're watching it. Oftentimes the work we're doing depends on what the Juju core team is doing. And we can't implement the UI for it until they've implemented the API for it. So we may, we stick things in tracking that we're watching but are not our responsibility because we want to know what the status of that is. Um, we've got branch start, which is basically, we try to do a pre-implementation call. You, you look at the card, what's involved in it, and then you get a hold of somebody and go, hey, I want to talk this through with you. And you talk through and you go, okay, um, this is what the bug is. I think this is about where in the code I see this issue. Uh, this is my plan to fix it. What do you think? And it's great to get a sanity check to go, nope, uh, I filed that bug and that's not what you're looking at. That's totally the wrong thing. You've misread the card, the bug, and everything. And they can set you straight before you go through and fix something that wasn't meant to be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, so from branch start, you go to actually coding it. So here, Jeff is working on creating this, this thing. It's three cards wide. And these little badges tell me what tool, what product it's on. So this is on the Juju GUI, the Juju GUI. Um, we've got other ones up here, which are Juju Quick Start, um, the charms, the, the production tooling that we use to deploy these things, you know, so we can kind of tell where this card belongs to, what project. Um, what's nice here is that these have all been done, which means that if you're looking for a card to work on, you're not going to be able to work here. You have to either go work in maintenance, or you have to come down here to Project A. And project A is working on moving the inspector to the left, and that's a different feature flag. Um, and so, as a manager, what's cool is that <laughs> I have promised to get these, this work done in three separate categories of, of tasks, right? We've got maintenance tasks, uh, <clears throat> machine view work, and inspector work. And all I did is I put the cards in the lanes, and I let the team go at it. And they chose to work on the machine view ones, that's great. You know, if you want to work on all the cool cards, that's awesome. But now, those cards are gone. You now have to come back and work on the uncool cards. And this gets into the idea of letting developers pick what they want to do. I've just told my boss, we'll get these things done in two weeks. The order they get done in, I don't care. Right? And so the developers are, are happier because they're picking the work they get to do. And I'm happier because I don't have to like micromanage, no, no, you go do this, no, 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 you go do this, you go do that. I just go, we should get this stuff done, guys. And they go, yes, that sounds good. Um, so here we've got some ready to code. This X means this one is blocked. So here's a card that we will get done this two-week cycle, but it's currently blocked on another card. Again, this is that power of visibility of just a sticky note. They have the little red X in the corner to say that this is blocked on something, uh, and you can easily look at it and find out what is it blocked on, and let me go work on that task so that I can unblock this and we can then work on it going forward. So we go from coding to review. Review, like I say, could take time. You know, sometimes if you, you're, you're a reviewer, um, has some suggestions and stuff for you. The next lane is what we call the landing lane. And this is what I broke today. I broke our continuous integration server environment. Whee -me. So this poor guy has got a card that's done. It's been reviewed. It's okay. But he can't land it because our automated system is not working. So fortunately, I will get that spun back up with the power of Juju tomorrow morning in about an hour. Uh, <laughs> and then what we have is we have, um, once it's landed, we then, every day in our stand-up, we run through this list of the daily call, what things got done. So this is great, because if you were waiting on one of these cards to be accomplished to do your own work, in the daily call you will hear, I got this and this and this done. And while it's here, you can go pull up what branch it was, go look at the diff, find out how it was done. And so, again, this daily call, what we'll actually run through a daily call is, what was done today, what, and then we'll check everybody's card, just, just what they're in progress. 
and go, you know, how is your card going? How's your card going? And a lot of times it's like, yep, working on it, yep, working on it, yep, working on it. But if there is anything to bring up or anything you learned that you need to share with the team and stuff, we have that mechanism in the daily call um, to, to say that. And it's normally like a 10, 15 minute thing. Um, to really keep everyone in the loop. No one, no one's out of the loop of what's been going on, you know. After daily call, it goes to releasable. So if they were like, hey, what's going to be included in the next release? I go to this lane and I just scroll down. <laughs> Here's the things that we're going to do on the next release. And at the end of the two weeks, we're going to try, well, actually, this week we're going to, yeah, at the end of the two weeks is coming. So we'll do a release. I'll run through these cards. We will um, uh, write up a change log based on the cards and the diff. Um, any bugs that are linked in here, we'll go to the bug report, mark them as fixed release to make sure that we keep our bugs in sync. Um, and then I'll clear this lane out and move it to archive, and we'll start a new releasable lane, right? And we'll go for the next two weeks. Yeah? Um, two questions. What's the uh, red uh, triangle on the uh, red card? Is that, uh, this is a high priority. So these were very important to get done. Um, because we're doing a release this week, these things were blocking release, so they were marked as high. Again, I'm giving visual cues to the team on what's really important to get done, but I'm not mandating you go grab that card next, right? So, you know, in theory, there's still some of that freedom and stuff for them to pick and choose, but they're picking and choosing between what's really important to get done. <laughs> you uh, mentioned your change log. Is that generated from the document? Yeah, well, I kind of do both, you know, because sometimes the, the get log is... We, we try to do more high level because, in theory, the Juju GUI is used by a bunch of sysadmins. It's, it's kind of a producty thing. We don't go through, I fixed the re I, I reworded this, I changed the spelling on that, I made this a blue link instead of a red link. We tend to go more, we fix these bugs. So if you had these bugs, FYI, they're now released. Um, we're working on this feature. We'll actually include the things behind um, a feature flag so that if you're an interested uh, user of the product, you can actually enable the feature flags yourself and go look at what's in progress. We are open source and we release very often. We love the web for that. And so uh, we take advantage of it. Uh, and then you'll see in the next thing here we have what is labeled the uh, weekly review. The stand-ups should be short calls, right? 5, 10, 15 minutes. But once in a while you learn something new, you have an idea, you um, you want to propose that we change something, let's use a different test runner because it's going to do a lot of nice things for us. Or we had a really serious bug that was really hairy and let's all talk about how not to do this again. So what we'll do is we'll create cards in the weekly review lane here. And then on our Friday stand-up, it's actually instead of a 15 minute call, it's a 45 minute call. Uh, and the idea is to walk through any important tasks in that window to go, okay, let me share with you some extra information. We don't want to bog down the daily stand-ups, but once a week we'll enable that time. And then we tend to put those on a blog, write them up, kind of share to the share to the world. We learned these important lessons this week. Um, here's what was going on kind of stuff. It's kind of interesting and it's, a, it's good to have a kind of, um, we used to call it the weekly retrospective, which is kind of a, a, a need, you know, if you think about it that way, it's really useful. But what's nice is to have a set aside time for it. So that throughout the week, we're not all getting bogged down and everyone else's little stuff is like, okay, make a card for Friday, you know, make a card for Friday, we'll talk about a Friday, you know, you can punt it off. So, yeah. Your uh, stand-ups, what time of day do you guys do those? So because we've got people from Mountain Time to right, Italy, so we, we do, ours is right now, it's at 11 o'clock Eastern our time, which is like afternoon time for the guy in Italy and morning for the guys in Colorado uh, and Canada. So. We try to make it, I like it, I've always had mine early in the day, and I like that where it's it's just a couple hours in so I can get in, get through my email, what am I gonna work on today, then go to the stand up and go, this is what I'm gonna do today, this is what I've, you know, my plan is or whatever, and then the next day, hopefully, my, my, my item is that landed, that's done. I'm gonna go grab this new item, right? Um, so, yeah, it's kind of different for everybody. Yeah, are you dividing tasks between people writing specs and people doing coding and people doing QA? Yeah, oftentimes, um, so well, so we, we treat the different things differently, right? So for QA, uh, QA is part of our code review process, which is part of landing every branch. So any change is QA'd immediately by the code reviewer. So we don't tend to have like QA personnel. What we do have is we have a rolling, everyone has a dedicated QA day. Um, every two weeks you come up, and your goal is to fi it's file a bug. As soon as you file a bug, you can quit. So the faster you find a bug, the sooner you're done with your QA day. 
Um, but the idea is that kind of um, every other day at least somebody is doing some level of just manual QAing through stuff. And that's not on a card. That's just kind of a standing task, you know. And so sometimes you're like, what did you get done today? Well, not a lot. It was my QA day. Okay. You know, we, we, we wave on that. Yeah. Now, as far as specs and stuff, oftentimes these cards are um, investigating. So, like, before we start a new feature, um, like, we're working on this machine view, and he added a bunch of uh, API calls. His first card was investigate what API calls we need to communicate with in order to add this feature, right? So, the card is investigate, and he took notes or whatever, and then that card was in coding while he was investigating. It was in kind of hot review landing, straight into done, and then it done, and the daily call is like, I found out what we need to do. So, so then from same, that... It's the same people doing the investigating... Yes. As they're doing the developing and they're doing the QA. Yeah, this is all within our team, right? If it's not our team, it's usually a tracking card or something, you know, because we don't have control over it. Um, but this is where if you're managing a team that has different people, we would we would split out more lanes where one team was looking at certain lanes, another team was feeding them with you know with other lanes of work. It's kind of obvious to me when I look at this how you're limiting uh, the work in process. It's right here. So the numbers at the top, uh, the, the, not every lane you'll notice has, has a number on the top. So maintenance has uh, three. There can only be three cards working in maintenance at a time. We've got six guys in the team. That means only three of them will be working on the maintenance work right now. The other three will have to be in project one or project A. Uh, if you go down, you'll see, and basically there's and three. So where, when it comes out of maintenance, where does it go? When it comes out of maintenance, it goes into landing and then into release. And if there's, is there a limit on the landing queue? Yes, there's three. If there's more than three landing, then there's a problem with our landing process. We, this is a you, call you for us to fix people it. people working on maintenance if you're... If, you if, if your card is stuck in landing, that means they're not doing anything else right now. But if there are three cards already in landing, yeah. you stop people working on maintenance. Yep. Yeah. Well, because is it ready to code part of maintenance or so yeah so this is three cards for all three of these lanes right so there are only th that's for active right for active okay so what are you looking for so that's not the total for maintenance so this is this is the total number of allowed in progress cards for maintenance all right because okay. the maintenance cards go from the from what we what we're going to do in two weeks so this is two weeks worth of work, which is, you know, 15 and 9 at most, 24 cards of work here. They go into start, and once it hits start, you are one of three limited work in progress here. If there are three maintenance cards and there were no other cards on the board to pick, you're in slack task mode. You can go grab uh, a slack task item. We actually have a lane down here at the bottom for slack and low priority maintenance. So. If you can't grab a card because the lanes are full, you would come down here and look at things like uh, writing some tests for this, um, looking at a different test runner, updating this JavaScript package that we have a dependency on. They've got a new version, but we should pull it in and test to make sure it works. But because we have an actual physical copy of the old version, we don't care. Like, it's working for us. The bug wasn't critical. We're in no rush to update. So it's a Slack task item, you know. And so, but this is a temporary, you know, if, if you have no room. So, and then notice, like, it's the same thing here for Project <coughs> 1 and Project A. There's, there's a limit of three cards in each of these. So, again, there so can only be you, three things. You've already got three cards in there, and the next spot for the task you would be working on is to go there, but it's full. Right. The rule is you have to stop working on what you're doing. And do yeah, somewhere. right. Because okay. other, otherwise, otherwise, otherwise gonna, it's not canvas. Right. Well, it's not came. It's you're not you're not pulling limited amount of work here. There's there's a it's an indication there's a problem in the system, and either a I may go you know what, it it's totally reasonable to have four as a valid card number there. Let me change that, or like in the landing, if there's three in landing, and someone's trying to put a fourth card in the landing, then something is wrong with our landing system, and we have to make that faster and more efficient. And so whoever's free should go work on that right now because that's blocking us from actually making good progress through our, our, our project here. Yeah. How do you handle triage in this type of system? Let's say you have Mark has one of his, you know, a really good shower and he comes up with this wall of text of stuff that he wants to change something like that. How do you handle that? Tell him we'll see it next two weeks. We create cards for it in the backlog. We score it. We move it across. Hmm. Uh, so he doesn't act. If, if you have how would you handle something where um, 
and get you get some giant group party or something like that, and you are the person who is pointing this into the system. You have to split it off into different. Yep. Tasks. So like all these cards in this backlog, this is my job as team lead. Okay. Is I I sat down for two days on the machine view, and created all the cards here as tasks. Right, and so I sat down like, what's involved in this? And I would go very carefully through the code. Okay, we'd have to add, you know, add these database tables. We need to add uh, update these queries, which is a task. We'd have to then make sure that we update the cache to respond to those queries, which is another task. And I would break them all down. And very often, a card of work turns into more cards. Right, that investigate card, which is investigate which API calls we need to write or to talk to, split into three different cards of implement call one, call two, and call three. Right, because each of those was a day's work to get updates. We we use the call that we have unit tests for it that we get it reviewed and landed, and so very often a card of work will split off into multiple cards as follow-ups or whatnot. But they all get a card. They all go back in the in, into the, the ready to code lane from there. Um, anytime we get a bug in, I triage the bug, and so you'll notice that in the maintenance um, in this maintenance on deck there are a lot of bug cards with all of these little bug numbers on them. And that's because people have filed these bugs, and I have judged these to not be critical, to stick in the urgent and make them part of unplanned work for the two-week cycle. These need to be planned, but, but again, they have to go through the process. We have to, we have to poke, plan a poker to find out how much work is involved in fixing that bug. Then I have to plan it for the next two-week cycle. So when George is like, Rick, when is this bug going to get fixed? I'll go, well, it's on the priority list to be talked about for the next two-week cycle. We're not going to start it this week. We may start it the week after, in which case it's within a two-week window. So, in theory, I can tell them it'll be fixed within three weeks. I don't know when within those three weeks, but somewhere within those three weeks, that bug will get fixed. And George goes, "Okay, as long as I have, as long as I have a number that I can, you know, tell people, you know, in three weeks we'll have this fixed." Okay. Um, so you're using these this whole methodology within the Juju team. Is other teams within Canonical? Yeah, a, a lot of teams use it. Um, a lot of teams use it slightly differently. Um, this board was actually put together by my predecessor, Gary, who left us to go to Heroku, and I'll kick him in the shins when I can see him next time because he's really tall and I can only reach that high. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, this kind of layout is really his work. We used Kanban in my previous team uh, with a different team lead in a different way. It wasn't as broken down by a project like this, where you had clear delineation between you know, maintenance and project one and A, which is why it was so baffling when I first moved to this team. Um, but yeah, this is, all, all, most. we're trying to get everyone in Canonical to, to use this. Um, most teams do, but a lot of them have their cards or three or four day cards, which, so for, for them, this idea of a feature card tracking with individual day-to-day -day things is just not what they tend to do. And so we're trying to get that instilled more so yeah. So you have a bug tracking system, right? Uh, we use Launchpad. Yeah, we're kind of this. And so it's external to this, right? So yep. if someone enters a bug and then you go and is it automated to put it in here? Or? So there, this has an API, and we've got a Python script that in theory will do that. Um, in practice, because um, it needs manual work, and a lot of bugs are just low priority. Yep, that's nice to have. It's not on the board. Again, if it's not going to be something we're going to work on in the near future. Don't put it on the board. It's mental capacity to process that, and I can already tell you that like, that's not happening this six months. So it kind of falls into whenever there's a bug, we uh, I get an email and and I will go through and triage it and go okay. So like the one bug right now that's in the top of this urgent lane up here. Notice there's no number on it. It wasn't part, wasn't here two uh, a week ago to be planning poker. It just popped up. Someone had a bug. It needs to be fixed before this release this week. So it's in urgent. And this, this is a key that the very next open developer who has who finishes a task, so you know, Francesco here who just finished a bunch of stuff, should be grabbing that card next and starting that bug because it, I, it is an urgent bug that must get fixed out of band. And so when my boss says, Rick, how much work are you going to get done? I take, okay, each, each developer, so six developers, for five days is 30 points, right? Or, well, it's just two points a day, right? So it's actually. <coughs> You know, 10 by 6, so 60 points a week by two weeks. So I'm like 120 points for the whole time period. The first thing I did was slash 80%. <laughs> okay, we're going to do 80% of that because I can guarantee you we will fill 20% of the time with either um, underestimations of work or things like this that are unplanned work that we have to get in. And so that's kind of my job to as processing how much work we're going to get done to plan for these things. And, but again, it follows the same process. 
the card is here. The developers can all see this, and when they go to grab their next card, they grab it, they go to starting it, they go to coding it, reviewing it, and landing it. And I can track, this is very important, my eye is on where this bug is. And I don't have to interrupt anybody, make a phone call, make a ping in IRC. I can tell where that card is at any given time. And in worst case scenario, on the stand up the next day, I'll be able to get a status update. So, you looked at that. What are you thinking? A day? Two days? I need to know. And they'll be like, no, it's a very simple hack fix. It'll take me a day to get done. Okay, then I can plan. But I don't have to interrupt him and multitask him and break his concentration and stuff because I have no clue where this is when someone comes to me and goes, Rick, where's that bug? I'll have to go talk to the guy I gave it to, you know. So, yeah. Two more questions. Um, so you plan 80% of capacity is what your bandwidth is. Do you guys look at the velocity history? See yeah, so you totally, what's nice with this with an API is you can do all that. And so um, I don't have experience doing it because I'm a relatively new team lead. Uh, the guys I did before, they would actually do, um, we have six month uh, sprints. One of the things they do every six months is they look at all the different teams and look at their velocity and how many cars they moved and stuff. But it's, it's very variable, right? Like I was saying, the Juju Core tends to have bigger work item cards. So we would move more cards. Does that mean we did more work? Well, not necessarily, right? Oh, it's all based on what the points ended up being and stuff. You know, like there's flexibility within the system to still do your own thing. Um, and, and so that's not always, you know, a great measurement of stuff. But yes, the idea here is to maintain velocity as much as possible over and over and over again. And developers land something at least every other day usually, which they get little victories they can see their work in progress with feature flags. Like, if you're a developer, this is a great way to go because there's just there's no real questions. You just get to work. You get to work on stuff interrupted. You get to land things and, and have it show off. Like it's a beautiful world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then is it one of your tasks as a project manager to go through and like once the developers say it's resolved, maybe it's been QA and stuff like that, can you go and you validate it and then update it in the bug tracker? Yeah, so like I'll, I'll go through this releasable lane when we do a release, and, and I'll go through because I'm very handy with middle click opening a new tab and a mouse, uh, <laughs> and I'll mark them as fixed release and stuff. Just you know, but someone has to do it, right? You could make it the person who does the releases job. You could make it, you know, whatever, whoever had who feels like touching the bug tracker today. Yeah. So from a TV getting things done perspective, this would be more like the next action type list and who's out what. And that list, and then something like the bug tracker list would be more like a uh, someday maybe anything that's not on here. Would right. Be more of a <laughs> we're going to get to it eventually. I mean, I mean, yes and no, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, in the sense that when the next two weeks comes up, I need to make sure I'm aware of what bugs yeah. have not been done yet and prioritize are any of these important enough to schedule in the next two weeks. On the other side of that. Um, there are bugs there that are in, like you know they're not technically they're in progress, right? And there are sure. things that people are, are doing, and so or we already have cards for. So it's not necessarily a distinction of what's doing and not doing. It's it's a mixture of both, right? But again, that only feeds the maintenance side. The two other sections here, these project sections, are the new features that we're being asked to do, which we're doing alongside of our bug fixing and maintenance and stuff. So um, what's nice is we're. We're not all just like, all right, everyone, let's all fix bugs for a week because it got really backed up. You know, no, we're like spreading it out. We're guaranteeing that we're going to fix some bugs every cycle. We're going to add some new features every cycle. We're going to make steady progress on everything we need to do. We're going to do it in a predictable manner every two week cycle. And then, like I said, I use these for little personal things too. They, this, this is the extreme, right? Like this is me and a team of six other guys and lots of features going on in coordination with design folks and bug systems and users and I mean this is we're don't, complex, yeah. don't yeah don't get crazy on this because but I just want to kind of show you how this this can really scale up and even at this size it's very visual to see what's going on it frees up developers to eventually hit slack time to be able to work on those things you always want to work on but never have time for because I have promised my boss we will get what did I say 120 we will get 120 work items done, and he has signed off that these are the things we're going to get done. If we get all these cards done, and it's Friday, grab a free, you know, grab a, grab another uh, a, 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 a slack time card and, and work on something interesting for the day, because we've we've delivered what we promised we're going to deliver. We have time, you know, and if we don't, well, then we, we got to get better about estimating and whatever. And we kind of go. From so, so for Canonical, you use Lean Kit for your own for Bookie. You're using Trello. Yep. to pretty much accomplish the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Alrighty, where's my presentation? So that was 
from, sh from theory, ooh, magic words, uh, to what we actually do do in real life. It doesn't actually work. So um, I showed and walked you through the board of doom. Um, so again, daily stand-up. I can't emphasize this enough. Um, there, there are two practices. Like I went to Canonical uh, to work on Launchpad. I did not care to work on Launchpad. I, what it's written, you know, it's Python, but it was not. It was Zope, and it was huge. And, and I was never a huge Launchpad fan. But they promised me I would have code reviews, which means I would actually have my code looked at by other developers who would suggest, you know, ways I could improve and whatnot and make me a better developer. And it does. Like I can't emphasize enough. It is that strong. They were going to have continuous integration. They're going to add, make me write tests, which was going to make me a better developer and make me have more faith in what I actually built, which they totally did. And they're going to give me a daily stand-up where I would every day have a chance to bring up anything I wanted to bring up, to have feedback and see the team I'm working on. And if you work from home at all, this daily stand-up visibility is priceless to where you don't feel like you're some dude in a basement on an island working on something. Those three things were worth not working on what I wanted to work on uh, in order to just make myself be a better developer. And if you're not doing those, talk to me, whatever. Like, they're so important. So, the daily stand-up provides great communication on what's blocked, what's almost done. Ooh, we can almost start the cool feature we've all been wanting to do. Um, what's far from done, you know? Hey, don't plan on this getting out. Like, I know you asked me for this new feature, but it's way back over here. It's not getting done anytime soon. It wasn't pulled into our two-week cycle, so I can guarantee you we're not even going to start it for two weeks. You know. Um, anything new to share? You know what? I hit this bug and I solved it with this cool debugging tool. And how cool is this? And you all should check that out. And suddenly, you have knowledge share, which is powerful from you know, all these techies. Um, and sometimes you have to blow up the bill, right? Once in a while, there's a branch that you have to just. You know what? I'm going to land this branch. It is going to, everyone's going to get angry emails, <laughs> it's going to blow up the build, it's okay. The follow-up branch will be right after it, but I, I am planning on ruining everyone's day. I'm going to let you know ahead of time. And it's good to have that kind of heads up and warning. So, as a developer, you know, like, what's in this campaign thing for me? You know, visibility, you can see what the heck's going on. There's no mysteries in life. Trust, and the, the campaign book makes a lot of this trust thing. Um, by working in these small chunks, regularly uh, in a standard way, um, you develop trust in a lot of different ways. One, you develop trust with the people who rely on you, your, your product, right? We're, we're looking at trying to do every two weeks a release because we have two week cycles. At the end of that, it makes a lot of sense to do a release. We don't have stuff stuck in progress for months at a time. As we do those releases, every two weeks we'll have to get better at the release process, which we're actually pretty good at now. Um, which means that whenever we do do a release, people will trust it because we're doing them frequently. We've got the kinks worked on how to do it. It's not that whole like, oh, we have to release the software. So who has the manual for that? What did we do last time? Wasn't there some kind of bug? Something hit? They had to like do something special, change the permissions on some file. Did we ever fix that? I don't know. Well, let's try it. You know, those releases from hell. Um, and a lot of trust with your management because they can see that you're doing work and what you're doing. And if a lot of unexpected crap sneaks into the, the, the cards, I can see them, right? They're, they're in the lane with no numbers on them. And I can go, hey, look, we promised to get all this done. We didn't because you guys asked for, you know, 10 super high maintenance things in the last two weeks, which killed our velocity on getting the features done and stuff, you know. It's all very visible and there for everyone to see. So dependable progress, regular updates. Again, that landing, you know, winning feeling. Uh, as a developer, the coolest thing is when people use it. I'm working on Google Summer of Code. And what's awesome is when a student does a branch and we work on it back and forth for three days and I try to get them to get their standards up and write tests and, and to, you know, pass lint and, and to kind of work on this feature. When, we, when I deploy that, it's like handing gold to these kids. I mean, they're just like, oh my god, everyone can see my feature I added. Like, it's so cool. Um, that's what we do, man. We like to build cool things because we want people to use it, you know. And then Slack time. We all... Wish we had more time to do cool things that would help the project and help the team and make us more efficient, and we just never fit it in. And in a way, you don't fit it in, but in a way, you do with this kind of setup. And then just sanity. Um, it's very predictable. As a dev, there's no fear that I'm going to go to some dev and be like, hey, hey, hey. So the CEO just said he wants feature X, and he wants it tomorrow, and so I picked you to do it, and hopefully you can stay tonight and tell your family that you're not going to be home 
because we have to get it done. Um, they know what's on the board, what's coming up, what's in the lane, you know, it's very predictable and sanity for them. So the thing is, when you go to do this, um, iterate on it. Everyone does it differently. The work in progress numbers are suggestions. You know, I mean, you, you know, at first, set them. Don't, don't run without the numbers. But measure, you know, put numbers, measure, how's it working, and tweak them if you need to. Uh, the, the lanes are arbitrary. You know, they're basically, they kind of fit the model of to do, doing, and done. But you can see on ours, we actually break it down much more fine grained than that. So by looking at what lane it's in, I can tell he's still looking into how to solve the problem. He hasn't had a pre-implementation call yet. Or the, the dev has had that call. He's working on it now.